Hello everyone and welcome to today's vlog. Before we get into the video today, I wanna to make an announcement. We are going to be in Asbury Park, New Jersey at Vagabond Surf Shop on May 25th from 2 to 4 p.m. for the grand opening of the surf shop and we're raffling stuff off. We're giving away a skateboard, giving away a gravy, giving away a wetsuit. We got stickers, other prizes. We got free posters. The whole crew is gonna be hanging out. On top of that, they're gonna be catering food so it's gonna be awesome. Mark your calendars, May 25th, 2 to 4 p.m., Asbury Park, New Jersey, for the dream. More details in the description below here, and welcome to today's vlog. Hope everyone is stoked. We're diving in. Surfing is an almost impossible sport. It's actually so hard. It's something that no matter how good you get at it, you can always get better. And that's not only on your performance on the actual wave, like while you're riding the wave. Riding the wave is actually the easiest part, essentially. Once you're up, and actually just cruising along down the line, it's really fairly simple. Especially today with the invention of 60 second rides in a wave pool, like the Kelly Slater wave pool. Once the lifeguard pushes you in, catching the wave of your life is actually fairly simple. You just hold on, point, and pray. But that's just it, catching the wave. One of the hardest parts about surfing is actually just catching the wave. And then once you're good at that, there's positioning. And then once you're good at that, there's timing and there's also speed. And now once you're okay at all of those things, you're gonna have to add some size. No, like actual size. And then you're pretty much starting back at square one. It truly never ends. In surfing, you pretty much get to the point where you could have always been in a better spot on the wave, no matter what, but you learn to kind of just live with that feeling, knowing that anything you do in surfing can never truly be perfect. Almost never. Just about every few years, everything clicks. And you find yourself in the position on a wave where you wrote it perfectly and really nothing could have ever been better. Now for me, that pretty much never happens. I could have always done things better, but I have been lucky enough to be in some okay spots on some good waves over the past few years. So here are my biggest and best paddle waves ever. Enjoy. Okay, so we're kicking this one off on the home turf. Just wanna throw it out there too. These waves are in no particular order. They're all just great waves that I caught over the years. Kicking it off on the home turf, it was a hurricane. I actually signed up for a surf contest. So that's how you know this clip's pretty old. But the morning of the contest, I surfed my heat and I actually think, did I get a 10? I got a really high score. I don't know, but that doesn't happen very much for me. That wasn't even the wave I'm talking about. When I was surfing my heat, I realized that the waves were really walled out and they were kind of closing out. So after I surfed, I decided to drive around and try to find something that might be a little bit better. We happened upon this perfect sandbar that was just picking up the waves great because it was like out the back a little bit. I did not have a big enough board, so I opted for the soft top. And this was pre Ben Gravy Wave Bandit. So kind of crazy. And I also did not have a leash. So paddled out there and positioning was pretty much impossible. This is one of those times when I just really wish that I had the jet ski. And as you can tell, I was having a rough go at it out here, getting slammed, losing my board. And I ended up getting a couple decent ones. But at one point, I finally ended up in the perfect position. All the elements of the universe came together and I ended up on this perfect jam.
This past winter, we went on the first ever Ben Gravy Surfboards team trip to Hawaii, and we ended up out at Waimea Bay one morning with my really good friend, Will Boothby, the lead singer of my favorite band, Gutter Drunk, and we were terrified. The waves were claiming 15 to 18, but it's always bigger than it looks, people. Waimea Bay is one of those places that's like really scary for the average surfer. So there's just big waves coming in. They hit that shelf. They stand up really gnarly. And uh, not only did Will end up getting a solid bomb, I ended up paddling into a couple waves that scared me. Everything came together for me because I knew I had put myself in that position to get a good one if it ended up coming. And I was lucky enough to be in the spot perfectly when this wave came through and I ended up getting one of my best bombs I've ever gotten at YMA Bay. Here's another wave with a guy named Will. I was out in Oregon surfing and the waves were supposed to be like 30 foot plus. And this is my first time ever surfing big waves. So I had no experience with this. So thanks to Will Scooting, we did a bunch of training, a bunch of preparations. I learned how to use the inflatable vest and all that stuff. And I, he wanted me to get comfortable with jet skis. So the day before I actually got this amazing step off on my soft top, probably to this day, still one of the biggest barrels I've ever gotten. Day of the swell came around and we ended up out there paddle surfing. Not only was I being cocky sitting on the inside trying to pick off some waves and got completely bulldozed by this set right here and had to get rescued by Will Scootin and <laughs> take five out on the jet ski. But when I finally caught my breath again, I decided that it was time to turn and burn on probably to this day, the biggest wave of my life. And lucky for me, when this wave landed on my head, it sent me nice and deep. So I was able to pop up after the wave had passed and I actually didn't get that worked, but that wave definitely put the fear of God right into me because I found out what it feels like to get a big old lip land on your head and get sent to the bottom. Back in Hawaii, this is a wave that me and Jamie kind of surf for fun sometimes when there's not much going on. I've caught some awesome rides out here, good times, but building swell, the waves were coming up, but it wasn't super clean and manageable anywhere, so we decided to paddle out. Jamie was shortboarding, he was picking off these rights, he was kind of just trying to do performance surfing, and uh, to him, the waves were just like whatever, average size, but to me, they were bombing. So I took out the JOB seven footer, and I ended up in the perfect position for this backhand dreamer dropped in the thing was just standing up behind me all big and i don't know if you can tell in the video but i was going extremely fast and it closed out behind me and it was just one of the most memorable novelty rides of my life probably the biggest novelty wave i've ever ridden let's take it to the shores of california when i met sensei steve sensei steve is a new jersey legend who moved out to san francisco many years ago to chase big waves he's caught a bunch of bobs at mavericks guy's a total legend and he took me out surfing in ocean beach san francisco for the first time in my life ever going big wave surfing obviously the waves weren't super big here as you guys can tell but for me that was my first time ever in heavy water like that video never does waves justice as a lot of you know if you've ever seen a video clip of you, yourself surfing or even looking at the waves from the beach it always looks smaller when you're hanging out on the beach but i ended up getting out there managed to catch a couple of really mushy ones put together some fun rides sensei steve was out there ripping per usual eventually i ended up in the perfect spot i was on my 10-6 absolutely gliding couldn't do a turn if my life depended on it and i ended up catching this absolute dreamer at the time, it was the biggest wave of my life. All right, let's jump down to Panama. Went on a trip to Panama with Mackie Films and we stayed at Red Frog Bungalow. It was a great time. Waves were pumping all week long. We caught all kinds of different waves, high performance waves, got some barrels, surfed some beach breaks, Almost drowned a couple times, but scariest day of the trip by far was when we went out to surf the gorilla. What the hell is this wave called? Silverbacks, that's what it's called. Anyway, Silverbacks is 
a deep water wave that goes to shallow and it throws pretty heavily. We didn't catch it super big, but it was big enough to scare me. Paddled out there, didn't have the right board, but I, I borrowed a board and I went out and I wasn't feeling super confident, but I kind of knew that I could probably manage making a drop or two. And this wave is a lot scarier in real life than it looks on video and it bowls up really, really hard. So caught a couple waves, sat out there for a long time. I kind of just waited and allowed time to pass and I just tried to get as comfortable as I could paddling over the sets. But eventually a nice size bomber came right to me and I was in the perfect spot. I took off, that was my first wave I ever caught out there. So <laughs> I raced it when I really should have been stalling but I ended up racing it down the face and I disappear off screen but when I was bottom turning I looked up and that was like a 20 footer just absolutely lipping, looking to just absolutely crush me. But that wave is really cool, really interesting and I wouldn't mind going back and surfing it again but at the end of the day, extremely scary. Let's talk about some pumping waves here at home in New Jersey. This is one of the times I truly believe that I was in the magic spot. Woke up and I took out this six foot five, I think, that um, the guys from Solid Surfboard shaped me. And me and Mackie rolled up and just like the beach that we chose to paddle out at was completely empty. Nobody around for miles. And we couldn't tell how big it was from the beach because nobody was in the water. And that happens a lot in Jersey. You roll up and you think it's like eight foot and you get out there and it's really like double overhead and legit and just absolutely hammering. So ended up out there and I actually caught some really, really good waves this day. And I will say I was probably, I was in a good spot on a lot of them, but this is one of those ways that I was talking about in the introduction. After getting a couple ways under my belt, I ended up in the perfect spot for this wave and I was able to take off nice and deep, time it perfectly, and get slingshotted out of it before it closed out, and I was nice and deep in the tube. And that's one of those ways that you look back on and you're just like, oh my gosh, I don't think if I ever had that opportunity again, I truly don't believe I could have ridden that wave any better. So that was a dreamer. Probably one of my deepest and most memorable barrels at home here in New Jersey. We're heading back out to California for this absolute dreamer. Ended up at Zeke's house. Guy was just waking up at like 9.30 in the morning. I was waking up at like 4 a.m. ready to go stretching, waxing my boards. But one day I did get him to wake up nice and early and we headed down to Black's Beach and it was absolutely bombing. If you know Black's at all, you know that it's predominantly a left and I kept being like, look at that right, look at that right. Kept saying and Zeke's just like, dude, there are no rights out there. This place is all lefts, boys, all lefts. But we ended up paddling out and I was on like a 9.6, I think, Zeke's uncle's board. So like there is no duck diving, there is no turning. It was all glide, baby glide. And I just sat out the back and I just waited for the right ones. Looking back on that, I think it would have been cool to take out a smaller board and just not wait for the sets and just get a couple nice big cruiser ones. But I ended up forcing this right. And for a second, this thing looked like it was gonna be an absolute dream scenario. But at the end of the day, Zeke was right. Thing was a big closeout, but I will say, the glide was beautiful and it was definitely one of the best closeouts of my life and ended up being a pretty cool thumbnail. We are back across the Pacific Ocean in Hawaii for this one. I took out my consignment board that I picked up in Montauk, New York. We decided that just because all the boys were out at sunset, we were going to go out there and catch a couple dreamers. It was bombing. Don't let this footage kid you. It was big out there. Big, rolly, then all of a sudden bowling up windy, sketchy, gnarly. Hawaii is scary. There's no way around it. But I had my trusty 8.0 consignment board and I was super stoked. Uh, got to paddle out with a hometown friend, Ricky, and we were out there. I sat for probably an hour before I turned around on an outside chip West Bowl and I ended up catching this beautiful right hand glider. Nothing super special about the way that I rode this wave, but it was just one of those experiences if you surf every day, you understand how hard it is to even get a good wave every session or even catch a wave at all every session. So I just think like the best thing about surfing is just sharing those moments of stoke. And I think one of the weirdest things about surfing is that people like to downplay everything that everyone does. And at the end of the day, riding a wave, big, small, gnarly, flat, rolling, bouncing, tanker wave, 
barrel at pipeline, Jersey, beach break, whatever. Riding a wave is an amazing experience. I'm more in the belief system that catching anything and riding anything is rad. So I hope that comes across in my videos. And like I said, nothing super special about this wave, but I put it in here because it's a memorable ride in my life because I went out there and didn't think I was gonna get one. And I ended up getting this beautiful cruiser all the way to the beach pretty much. And uh, it was a great, great time in my life. I know what you guys are thinking. You're thinking, Ben, yeah, these waves are cool and all, but where's the good ones? Where's the good rides that you've caught in your life? And I'm finally here to tell you about the last wave of the video. It was recently, we had like this 25 foot swell here in New Jersey, biggest waves I've ever seen in my life. It was fully nuking and it was also a challenge. So the following day was still pretty darn big and it was pretty darn perfect and the waves were blowing offshore. And I went out in the morning on my shortboard. It really just, it wasn't enough board for the spot that I chose to surf. So after a couple hours of struggling, I decided to paddle out on my mid-length and I caught a couple dreamers. So I had some really fun waves under my belt and I was pretty stoked. I decided to go to the wide bowl where no one was sitting and I decided to put myself in position if one of those wide bomb sets came and hopefully I could hook under the lip and catch a barrel. Thankfully, after a long wait, I ended up in the perfect position on the wave and this is what I was talking about. Paddling, positioning, speed and timing. I truly don't think I've ever ridden a wave any better than this because if you see in the video, I drop in and I don't do anything. I draw the line with my bottom turn, I enter the barrel and I come out. There was no pumping, there was no fading, there was no stalling, there was no wiggling around. It was positioning, 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 and I just ended up dropping into that wave with the perfect amount of speed in the perfect spot, and I got barreled on my mid-length, the Menace, that's named after my dog Dennis. And I gotta say, if it wasn't the best barrel of my life, it was one of the best barrels of my life and the best barrel I've gotten in recent history. So thank you guys for sharing this with me today. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope everyone's doing well, getting out there every day, catching a wave, getting the enthusiasm up and chasing your dreams, taking those small steps forward to conquer your dreams and accomplish the small and big goals that you have in your life. Just wanna say my arm is feeling better and I have an appointment coming up here this week and I might be getting some good news. So wish me luck, thanks for everything. We'll see you next vlog. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here for the dream. And yeah, we'll see you next video.